It was stunning. It was mind blowing. Um, after the biology questions, I had them type in, you know, what do you say to a father with a sick child? And it gave this very uh, careful, uh, excellent answer that, you know, was perhaps better than any of us in the room might have given. And so I was like, wow, uh, what is it? What is the scope of this thing? Because this is way better. So Bill Gates decided to weigh in on this AI revolution that's happening. So today, let's take a look at what he's writing and some of the most important things that he's saying about AI and this new AI age that is beginning. So he starts out saying that in his lifetime, he's seen two demonstrations of technology that struck him as revolutionary. And the first was the graphical user interface, which sparked the whole personal computer revolution and allowed millions and eventually billions of people to start using computers for personal and business tasks. And the second thing that he's talking about is working with OpenAI, the founders of ChatGPT and Dolly. He was involved with them in one way or another since 2016, way before most people even knew about this company existing. In 2022, he gave them a challenge make this AI capable of answering questions that it hasn't been specifically trained for. And as a subject matter, he chose AP Bio, a uh, high school test for advanced placement. The reason he did that is because the test is more than, as he calls it, simple regurgitation of scientific facts. It asks you to think critically about biology. If you can do that, he said, then you would have made a true breakthrough. He thought the challenge would keep him busy for two or three years, they finished it in just a few months. By the way, GPT-4 is placing in the high 90th percentile, 96, etc., on advanced placements for college reg for college readiness, as well as some some of the advanced tests that they give in colleges. So it seems to be like it's progressed even more since middle of 2022. Once it has aced the test, they asked it a non-scientific question. What do you say to a father with a sick child? And it wrote a thoughtful answer that was probably better than most of us in the room would have given, which is kind of funny. You can imagine a room, a room full of nerds and geeks that would probably have a hard time answering some of those questions. But this AI, no problem. And he goes on to say something that really stuck out to me and it's that the development of AI is as fundamental a creation as the creation of the microprocessor, the personal computer, the internet, and the mobile phone. It will change the way people work, learn, travel, how they get healthcare, and communicate with each other. Entire industries will reorient around it, and business, businesses will distinguish themselves by how well they use it, how well they use AI. I think what he's saying here, so are a lot of very smart people involved in this field, is that AI is a revolutionary technology. and We're just at the very base of the mountain of this massive wave that's coming. And um, we're about to see a lot of things all over the world, including business, healthcare, pretty much anything you can think of, be rapidly changed and affected by AI. Now, some of the things that he talks about in his uh, blog post is how this will affect the inequality around the globe. And he does call for people to be aware of it. And um, we'll get to it at the end because he, he does sort of say that um, just if we let everything develop naturally, it's likely that this will mainly benefit the, the wealthy nations and the wealthy people. And it's unlikely to just by default really help the poorer nations. That it's up to us to really make sure that this is sort of equally distributed across rich and poor. And this is where he says that the world needs to make sure that everyone, and not just people who are well off, benefit from AI. He goes on to talk a little bit about what AI actually means versus AGI, artificial general intelligence, meaning some computer intelligence that's able, equally able to do all tasks, even things that it's not necessarily trained to do. He ends with something that I found very funny. Soon the pre-AI period will seem as distant as the days when using a computer meant typing the, the C prompt rather than tapping on a screen. I remember those days when you had to change folders on a computer, MS-DOS, by um, typing out these prompts on a computer. 
And I realize now most people, even my age or after, just have no recollection of it. And most likely in 20 years, there's gonna be a lot of people who can't even envision how it is to operate computers and create things and write and art without using some sort of an AI assistant. He's talking about the productivity enhancement that we will have because of AI. Um, he expects that we can train AIs to empower people to do more, this work more efficiently. It will be almost as you having sort of a, this intern, having a white color worker available to help you with various tasks. And Microsoft describes this as having a co-pilot. And they're going to start incorporating this into Microsoft Office, which they're already doing. They're already launching things like the Microsoft Designer. They're already putting this into Office, etc. So he thinks of it as sort of creating a personal agent, your very own assistant, like a smart, intelligent assistant that's going to take care of a lot of the busy work that can answer your phone calls, emails, that can schedule your doctor appointment, that can pay the bills, etc. Next, he's talking about health and how AI is going to completely change the healthcare industry. One of the things that take up the most time uh, for doctors, at least here in America, and I'm sure probably most of the world, is sort of like the busy work, the paperwork, filing insurance claims, dealing with paperwork, drafting notes from a doctor's visit. All of that is going to be replaced by AI. Right now at hospitals and other places like that, you have whole departments that just kind of go back and forth, uh, calling insurance claims in and filling out paperwork and stuff like that. A lot of that can be replaced with AI. There's no reason for a human being to sit there and hold and then basically convey some information that could be very easily done with these sort of uh, programs. In poorer countries, he says how the doctors that are available be able to be more productive and reach more people. It's gonna be very effective to help a lot of the deaths that happen, especially with young kids. For example, many people in those countries never get to see a doctor and AIs will help the healthcare workers that they do see for them to be more productive. And then this next part is something that I've been talking about and something that I personally find completely fascinating and I think is gonna be probably, this might be the biggest breakthroughs that AIs will help us achieve. And that's pointing that intelligence at developing new biotech breakthroughs. So Bill Gates says AIs will dramatically accelerate the rate of medical breakthroughs. Now we've already seen that with things like DeepMind and protein folding, where it's able to predict the structure of proteins. And proteins are of course, are kind of like the little factories of life. They're like the, they're these little systems that come together to produce life as we know it. And it used to be incredibly difficult and, and very expensive to predict the structure of these proteins. But with DeepMind and AI, it's faster, much cheaper. The first breakthrough occurred, I believe, in 2020. And since then, it's just been accelerating and getting better. The same thing can be done with designing certain medicines, certain drugs. The reality is that the biological systems are so complicated that humans, we, we have a hard time understanding and dealing with it. Whereas with AI, this is what they potentially could be really good at is uh, sort of predicting how everything works and explaining it back to us, or at least showing us how stuff works. I believe, I remember reading how, in order to sort of predict a how, how protein folds, it used to be one student's whole PhD thesis and years of work and over a hundred thousand and various expenses to sort of complete that project to figure out how one protein is shaped. Whereas DeepMind, you know, we feed all the data that we have into it and it starts predicting what those proteins look like. It just spits them out. And again, this is brand new technology. It's growing exponentially. So we are likely to see our understanding of proteins, for example, uh, grow exponentially. And that's just the first thing that we found that we could use it for. So eventually it could potentially be used for finding solutions to certain genetic diseases, how to find cancers faster without um, needing invasive testing, etc. And the next thing he talks about is education. He says, but I think in the next five, 10 years, AI driven software will finally deliver on the promise of revolutionizing the way people teach and learn. It will know your interests and your learning style so that it can tailor content that will keep you engaged. It will measure your understanding, notice when you're losing interest and understand what kind of motivation you respond to. It will give immediate feedback. And then we get to the risks and problems with AI, which of course, this is a 
topic of deep debate right now because we don't know, we can predict some of the risk that AI will have, but it could be much bigger than we can even imagine right now. So Bill Gates says, super intelligent AIs are in our future. Compared to a computer, our brains operate at a snail's pace. An electrical signal in the brain moves at one one hundredth thousand the speed of the signal in a silicon chip. So, and once we develop AGI, these strong AIs, as they're known, we'll probably be able to establish their own goals. What will those goals be? What happens if they conflict with humanity's interests? Should we try to prevent strong AI from ever being developed? These questions will get more pressing with time. He also recommends a few books that are um, that I've seen recommended by other people as well. Bill Gates reads some in insane amount of books. I think he just kind of like chews through them. And so when he recommends three, I think that's probably a good recommendation since he probably read everything there is to re read on the subject. And uh, the ones that he recommends is Super Intelligence by Nick Bostrom, which is one that keeps popping up all over the place. He says, I don't agree with everything the authors say, and they don't agree with each other either, but all three books are well-written and thought-provoking. Talks about the next frontiers. He's talking about companies that are developing new chips that will provide the massive amounts of processing power needed for artificial intelligence. NVIDIA is making some exciting announcements in this field. They do seem as one of the AI producing companies, AI chip producing companies that's at the forefront forefront of all of this. There's a battle right now going on kind of between US and China in terms of who is able to produce and get their hands on these chips because both countries are trying to win the AI race. And just recently in 2022, US did a lot of things to prevent China from getting their hands on a lot of these chips. And that's why Taiwan is so important in all of this because they do produce a very large portions of the US of the world supply of chips, specifically these advanced chips that are needed for um, AI development. Bill Gates also says some use optical switches, lasers essentially to reduce their energy consumption and lower the manufacturing costs. Ideally, innovative chips will allow you to run in, in AI on your own device rather than in the cloud as you have to do today. On the software side, the AI algos that drive and AI's learning will get better and better. We've seen that with GPT-3, GPT-4, where we see that sort of exponential improvement in how well they're able to communicate and what they can do. And one interesting question he poses is, are we gonna see specialized AI, like one for medicine, one for education, one for you know some sort of a mathematical processing, et cetera? Or are we gonna see sort of this artificial general intelligence that's able to learn and master any task. And he proposes a couple of things that we need to be thinking about as, as a country, as a nation, as the human race, right? And first is to balance the fears about the downsides of AI with the ability of it to improve human lives. Like we can't just be all doom and gloom and we can't also be just absolutely positive. We have to balance those two out. There are dangers and there are incredible benefits and we have to be aware of both. And second, market forces won't naturally produce any products and services that help the poorest. So what he's saying is it just left to their own devices. A lot of these companies will make life great for the richest, the, the people in America, et cetera, the people with money, but they may not improve lives of people in the poor nations of the world. So we have to sort of keep that in mind and try to distribute some of those breakthroughs and some of that newfound wealth uh, across the globe. And finally, he says that we should keep in mind that we're only at the very beginning of what AI can accomplish. Now, whatever limitations we see today will likely be gone by tomorrow. He says, I'm lucky to have been involved with the PC revolution and the internet revolution. And he's seeing this as the next big thing. And this is what I'm seeing as well. The all the computing things, all the internet things, the mobile stuff that happened over the last 20, 30 years have completely changed the world and they've made millionaires and billions, billi billionaires in the process. And what's coming now is sort of the next big thing. And I think it's important, like if this is something that you're interested in, that you stay plugged in and you keep learning about this stuff because 10, 20 years from now, you're gonna look back at this and say, wow, that was, the biggest thing that ever happened to the human race and and hopefully we're able to take advantage of it if you thought that was interesting click subscribe and i'll see you in the next one